Old Beaver, away! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crits Cast for ETF Duel Season 35, Week 7 game between the Finns, the Lions about Circle It, uh, I'm going to butcher that name all night long, uh, and Virtus Bro, my name is Lucky, and I'm joined this evening by Archer of the Wrong Production and Dumb Tumpers, my co cast. How's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Should be a fun game here. We've seen a little bit of these teams before. I don't know how much Virtus Pro has been on stream so far, but I've seen them week one. Uh, I had my reservations about how high I think they were going to place, but they did really well this season of all. Uh, with like, I think a map loss last week, making the performance look a little bit worse and making their chances on getting first They're very unrealistic, I think, right now. But playoffs should be set in stone for them either way. Regardless of this game, the question is just of how much they're going to have in terms of points ending this week with. And the Finns have like the faintest of chances as well to make players, but it's like anything needs to like around them needs to be perfect. And the moment they drop any points, it's pretty much over for them, I think. Yeah, they need to catch uh, six. Uh, sorry, they need to catch four map wins in two weeks. So they need to win every single one. And coming up against Virtus Bro, the second place team in the season, the only one that's sort of really contesting Boynical at this point in the points. Um, you're, you're looking at a hard ask here, Dumb. But uh, maybe, maybe by some sheer luck, someone else on the leaderboard is going to throw really hard, and they might be able to make it into playoffs. But we talked about it before the cast, and we were thinking to ourselves, hmm, these other games look like they could be free Ws for these teams. But you never know. Yak has the power to chuck games in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, surprises happen sometimes. If anything else for Virtus Pro, it's just, you know, a little bit more practice for players, right? They're in for sure. Um, realistically, second, I believe, as well. So they will have at least one free week before their game is I think how players work out this season. So you take what you can get. These are weird maps where if you just don't have a good start to begin with, you will have a tough time coming back. So figuring out how to, you want to do things as quickly as possible and not have to like figure things out on the way there is very, very important for granary for Snakewater. Mm -hmm. They will have to have these things going right rather quickly. And this is just, if anything else, a really, really important warm-up. Indeed. So, just to run down the rosters really quick, Dumb, on the side of the Finns, we are rocking that star-studded roster of Erpa, Lost, KYY, Eklund, Horpy, and Neon. This team, of course, been together for a little while now, made it through a couple seasons, done their time really sort of bonding together, a few little class swaps here and there, but overall, I believe a pretty solid roster, and I'm hella confused as to how they, uh, you know, how they haven't been doing too well um in in this season since they are currently placing fifth on the other side however we have virtus bro with a pretty strong roster i'd go ahead and say mist and lanza on the scouts mist and did a insane job last season uh soldiers of slash and calling calling and slash of course ultimate powerhouses and the demo man of kuna up and rising and the medic of dqz so once again two strong rosters that are going to be facing against each other but uh, maps of Granary and Snake, any predictions from you, Dom, about how these are going to go? Uh, I'm going to say 1-0 on each of them. I don't care who wins, but it's going to be 1-0 on each of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how things usually go here. Uh, no, but really, it's it's like tough to have these explosive gains, at least on Granary and Snake, what it still happens, uh, generally speaking. So we'll see what they can do in terms of breaking these damage that are usually bound to happen. Indeed, we are on our way to the first mid-fight, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome back to Season 35 of Division 1, our Week 7 game between The Finns and Virtus Bro, and I'm going to be watching Kuna on his way to the mid-fight, and uh, everyone is typing in some random stuff in chat, not exactly good luck, have fun, but we'll see how this goes, Eklund picking up the pack, also as well as Kuna picking up his pack nice and early, just a few pistol uh, pistols being spammed right now, no soldiers bombing just yet. Maybe angling to go from Garage, now seen by a scout. We have got Neon going forwards towards Kuna. Lots of damage being dealt there. First soldier goes in onto Horpy. Horpy down to such low HP there. Lost getting bombed into the air as well. So much damage on the blue side that the red scout's now able to come forwards. But Erpa with the flank now getting on top of them. And a great bomb from Neon. Takes down DQZ and missed. And we're going to have an escape now from Kuna and the rest of his squad back into second. That was really funny because Erpa's flank did absolutely no damage. But they were so scared of it. They immediately went back, tried to play safe from it, and then the bombs actually came in and destroyed them. So somehow the zero damage flank did all the damage it needed to do. And here we go. It's huge work they've done off of this mid one alone. Calling force back as well couldn't 
manage to get them any more time on second, and this will just go straight into last, but it's Uber, if not for missed sniping. Oh, it's KYY in with the Banny Uber now, it would appear. The sentry gun is up, and this is a total failure. The link gunner needs to run out of here. Great headshot coming out there at the start of that push, just denying them entirely. And like you were saying, done before, it's just the presence of uh, presence of these players that can some, sometimes just halt the aggression, because you never know in this kind of higher-up division just how strong things can be as Neon gets spotted out. Uh, in the rafters there is going to get taken down and looks like Horpy has actually got only a small disadvantage now done. He's been building really well on the side of uh, DQZ there. Alright, let's see how much they can do with this. It's like an insignificant ad unfortunately, it really, it's like 10%, they will get second for sure. Maybe some present yard if they're lucky though, but seeing that most people are already spread up here, it can be difficult. They still try to take their chance through far side yard back into the main area and that just seems to be good enough to scare the fins away for now, some spam here and there. Doesn't seem to scare off Virtus Bro just yet though. They want to take this yard as much as they can. You can see falling weak, but not going down. No follow up attempt either by anyone on the finished side here. So Lenta would circle it, resigning themselves back to mid, seeing how they can drag this right now. Neon mostly breaking the map. Maybe no, like he's not quite wallbugging. Well, I mean, kind of. It's just <laughs> like clipping that's allowing him to stand up more than wallbugging, I guess. But. Uh, yeah, this will stay here for a little while. It's just about who's the most daring and for who it will work out the fastest. It looks like we have got a soldier being slightly aggressive in that connector area, but Erpa actually getting taken down in the garage there is going to open up some space now for the red side to send in some kind of sack. Of course, notorious uh, granary for being difficult to sack in on, but we have got a soldier actually making his way in. Gets immediately spotted. Does get the return frag onto Neon there as he did try and make something happen immediately but whether they sacrifice another is probably not going to happen as the long respawners are out for the red side. We've got a soldier moving in towards garage just pressuring now. We've got the uh, left hand side being busted by the red side in fact and uh, they are going to pop out this Uber. It's going to be a little bit of a trade. We are seeing a lot of flashing from the red side and the blue Uber now is really strong on top of this point. They do find the bombing soldier. Lands are getting cleaned up as well. It's a little bit of a disastrous uh, Uber there from the red side. The blue Uber very terrific and they are going to be able to take this yard area and potentially a bit more as Kuna does get picked up there on the retreat and these scouts pushing so hard now in towards second they are going to be able to pick up uh pick up one player there and they are now bombing the demo man forwards in towards mist mist does get piped down there by echelon the great little plays here they are now getting point pressure as well some really coordinated aggression here coming out of the fins they are going to be getting cap time here and it looks like it's going to be a round though that was just really clean from me for last like you said it was just that bit better and the evil lasting longer just meant they were so much more confident into keeping space on mid. Were able to call out people trying to get into the back lines, and they just carried us all the way. The damage was there, they didn't let anyone escape that they didn't need to because the explosive clusters were lacking. So the scouts, like you said, had the freedom to chase all the way. Made that one work brilliantly. Pins up one hour. Oh, that's always a scary position on a granary. Indeed, we are now making our way in towards the next mid. Eklund a little bit faster with the damage initiative onto Kuna there. Kuna gonna have to play insanely passive here. Unable to drop down to get that pack as there was uh, pressure down on top of it. We have now got Mistress on the high ground, taking a lot of spam, but making room for his soldiers to bomb through. And now now taking all of this high ground. Lost getting juggled in the air, gets absolutely munched there. And we have got Earth and Lanza now taking a 1v1 in garage for regroups to get with the rest of the team as KYY takes down another. But we've got a soldier in behind onto DQZ. DQZ with a Nice surf to get away there, and the defensive play from Mist does clean up Neon there, and uh, the red side are going to be able to take this mid. Oh, that was sick by calling there. He popped up an ammo pack from Crate, jumped into it, on, and oh. landed on Catwalk. That was actually insane. That was the best play I've seen all game. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Are you not to discredit this mid fight? Because they kind of just did play fairly aggressive, fairly early, and just ran with it, and the Finns were just pressured back into the corner incredibly quickly, and surprisingly. The counter action was really late, right? Neon had his attempt by that point. Everyone else was already scared enough to fall back all the way to second, and it wasn't enough anymore to turn things around here. So, Virtus Pro just having a read here works out just fine. Pulling out the uh. sniper, you don't see it too often, but I mean, if you can make it work, I suppose, why not? Okay, we've got a soldier now bombing in, isn't gonna find anything. A bit of damage onto the scouts, but tons of room being created here. Uh, for the rest of the red side, it's Echo Colin bombing through there. Does find tons of room. And uh, Lance Kuhn is getting, does find the kill as well onto KYY. That's going to make some space now for Lanza to get a nice angle there in towards second. Let's see if he can find anything here. Damage peeking around this corner. The demo man now pressuring kind of heavily. Is just going to start slow peeking this fully charged, but not going to be able to find much as Kuna now having to be cautious. Lots of spam coming down from the upper areas. And uh, the only thing that they really have is a bit of solace as Horpy is 
kind of low right now. Is missing 50 HP, so they are going to try and make something happen here on towards that left-hand side area. Now peeking lands around the corner, but the spam pressure from the Finns is is keeping up strong, as well as KYY there, holding that angle nice and close. It's going to be difficult here for Lanza to find anything. Yeah, notoriously bad areas here towards mid and second to get the sniper to be effective. Oh. But it doesn't mean it's impossible. Lanza wants to prove it. Hits one headshot. Can they do much with this? They pop through immediately. Catch lots oh. for Hoppy can pop through himself. Two down already. You don't need to have the sniper do everything, but if he lands something and you know how to play with it, that's good enough already. Then you just play off the damage and it works out just fine. Eklund and Lost still down, however, Kuna did find that frag onto Eklund in second with the Seeker Trap. Uh, Lands are finally getting taken down. Uh, sniper pressure is removed. Missed though with the chase onto Neon, does find that frag as well. A, a few beautiful shots from him to clean him up there. And we have now got players all rushing in. Horpy gets taken down there, so no heals for the blue side for a small amount of time. We are playing Minecraft on last, however. As Slash does get taken out there, and we have now got Red Team retreating with their uber advantage back in towards second. But it's looking like it's going to be an unlikely retake here from the side of the blue team, as they have now decided and opted for an engineer. That was really nicely done by Slash. They just stood there and shot. It looked really awful because the demo was approaching, right? That's a bunch of damage coming towards you and shot for Virtus Pro. But now they just waited for long enough for the medic to come close as well, and that's when Slash took his moment, jumped through, went for the man, they got that kill, sure he died for it, but damage has been done, they have the uber now, that's what they need, a little bit of time obviously, like you said, to set up some defense here, let's see if it's good enough. They're ubering directly through top, on towards the sentry gun, the Putus has taken absolutely no damage so far, but Holby getting low does get two pipe down, he wasn't close to uber, so it didn't really matter, but lost that with a nice rocket on Talanta to clean him up, we have now got two soldiers on the high ground, down on towards Eklund, Eklund, about half HP right now, but going to be heading back in towards the spawn. Just the poot is left on the field right now. So not a lot of pressure towards that point. They could just play it if they needed. And Lost now is pressuring super hard on towards the miss. Does find that frag. A nice rocket from Lost as well. Taking down Colling and Virtus, uh, Virtus Bro are going to have to start escaping there. Some great play from Lost to defend that point there. And it's going to be Kuna trying to escape in towards second, getting pressured by Ekelin. Does land one pipe onto him though. And that upper area is going to force him to retreat, but lands now on the chase. And they are going to manage to halt this blue aggression, but once again, Horpy did perish, and that is going to give DQZ advantage. Really close call there, but Lost saving that just barely for his team makes all the difference right now. But just because you didn't lose doesn't mean you're back to winning. They're still stuck on last year. They didn't get good enough position out of this to really keep momentum forward. And in fact, it's just uh, still in the hands of Lucas Bro. Yeah, they are now coming directly into last, on towards Erpa, they do take him down pretty much immediately, but not before he finds Kuna. The sentry gun is still active, does finally get taken down there on the right hand side by Lanza. Lost now taking so much damage on top of this, but some, a great rocket once again onto Lanza, denying him from moving towards the point. Neon now taking the high ground, does get Scatagun down eventually. The sticky bombs though, oh, wasn't quite enough from the blue demo man, and that is going to even it out at 1-1. Uh, that bit of negligence can be dangerous though, to just overlook where the stickies are exactly. And it, it almost was enough. If there was like less cap time or something like that, he like got the pipe out quicker to deal with the scout. Would have made enough of a difference. Not quite the case here just yet. So 1-1 one, one scoreline, which is certainly still in it. Let's see if the Finns can respond with a stronger mid fight than last time. Eklund is already on mid, so is Kuna. Kuna once again opting for this high ground area. Once again, both scouts just pistol whipping across to see if they can find any early damage on towards Kuna. And they are pressuring really well. We are seeing the red high bomb come out now in towards Eklund. Tons of damage onto him. It's going to force his retreat out of Garage, as they did find Holpi with that bomb once again as well. But they are having lost bomb in towards DQZ. It's just a massive collapse on the blue side on towards that blue med uh, sorry, red medic. And they do find him there, but not at the cost of losing this mid fight. It is damage reduction at this point, right? To get these sort of sacks in. So that's the minimum you want to see happen. Getting that successful kill here makes enough of a difference. It will be a comfortable little advantage for Hoppy at least on this side of his Medigan, but not like a ton, 15% by the looks of it. Maybe, or well, I should say likely not enough to really get into mid with easily. That's probably the optimal scenario. So not quite the case here. They will have to make with what they have, and what they have is likely as they made. Virtus Pro immediately challenging it, seeing if they can get oh. anything through, and that's a start. Yeah, Lanza just W keys in towards Eklund, does find that frag, but tons of damage. Now DQZ actually getting caught out there by Erper. A few nice shots from him and a bit of juggling does cause his demise. And we've got Horpy, Neon, and KYY now just going to be retreating out of second. But they do have Uber advantage done. So the plan is just, you know, build up the super, get your respawners, and then potentially repush second if they choose to do so. 
it is an awkward one to push into though because you always have to like cover so many things right launch box just generally above you as well and everyone that's checking top is just kind of stuck in a 1v1 if the fight does happen calling and slash being the ones of note here on virtus pro trying to make this push out all the more difficult if they get a force out and the rest of the combo lives this is already worth it there we go slash in for the kill and We'll get the force he was looking for. That might be enough for them to play back into this point later. Uh, he lives way longer than expected and forces this Uber back. And we have got a back cap now from Lanza. Does find the meat shot, in fact, and suicides towards the point, unfortunately, there. But not for the cost of the rest of the blue team, though. All dying on second. And they've lost Neon, KYY, and Erpa. And now they've just got Echo now trying to defend on his own. Super close to this door now, not playing the range game at all. Lost can't hit that air shot, unfortunately. Onto that soldier. It's just Erpa and Horpy left alive as the red Uber now gets popped out. And they are just going to take the Uber off towards that point. And they are going to be able to cap that one out. It's going to be 2 1 done. A really nice recognition to just immediately go through off the shot of the back. Yeah, everyone just gave them free space on second, so they didn't need the Uber for that point anymore whatsoever. And just took this straight to last. They still had player add. Make do with what you have as quickly as you can before they even get the spawns up. Also prevents them from setting up like a heavy a sentry, a sniper and spawn, anything like that. Just played it really quickly there. Nicely done by Virtus yeah. Pro. A lot of great plays coming up from them. Let's see if they can keep this coordinated aggression going in this game as we reach our next mid fight. And there's going to be a rather even demo trade right now. Just spamming out Sticky's Kuna getting low. He's going to need that arrow. But we are seeing Neon with the bomb, though, in towards that demo man. It's totally denied by Lanza, however. We've got now the Red Soldiers now bombing through on towards Horpy. Horpy on such low HP, but Lanza is going to be there with the flank to finish up that kill. DQZ still alive in the corner as KY takes a 1v1 with Lanza. Lanza winning that one as well. He's on an absolute tear on this mid fight. Lost now. Trying to fight against missed in garage and he's just gonna get chased in towards second and lose his life echelon the only survivor that is uh, a very small sort of boon for them right now here having this moment like it's a few traps maybe somewhere but that's all they can really say for themselves and those have been spotted already as well neon on spy right now really blatantly just walks through the shutter door invisibly i don't know if anyone noticed because Mist could have seen it then arguably should have as well that there was just an open shot with no one in there. But we'll see if oh. the sort of ignorance gets punished. Not quite. <laughs> Luckily Lanza, they have ears. Lanza with the slow turn. <laughs> just to look at him there. That was great. Oh my god. I, I feel so bad for Neon. Anyway, he did die. Miss getting caught there though as well. Lanza with the lol in chat as DQZ now pops his Uber in through the right hand side. In towards the central gun. Kuna with a nice little jump there to get forward towards it. But the heavy is now the next line of defense towards this point. Tons of damage being dealt for him however. He's going to need to get arrowed up here. Tons more damage getting rained down on top of him. But it's going to be a collapse now from the rest of the blue team in towards the red side. And they are getting kills here. But Lanza now in a 1v3 situation. I believe in this man's ability to fight them but he just gets too rocketed by neon and i've eaten my words well the least he could do there is just live for quite a while which he arguably did right everyone's back on the field not quite on second yet but it's going to be enough to at least put on the hold somewhere wherever they choose to do it and the pin's already slowed down out of last they're already starting to take a fight here on second there's only kuna really in though so that's not going to last too long so we'll go down towards the yard again not much of any sort of good evil situation at hand for Virtus Pro, so how much can they really do here? Yep, looks like they are just deciding to rush this one out as they are now bombing in towards Horpy. They do not find that force, even though he did, uh, got take a, well, had taken a ton of damage there. Is going to retreat now for that pack, wasting quite a bit of time. They could have used this time to be getting in towards mid and just looking for that Uber exchange. Maybe thinking they have more Uber than they actually do now. Pressuring towards that garage area and Horpy probably calling for a little bit of a retreat now as uh, Ubers are now totally even done. So now it's just a case of who's going to do what. Mist decides he's going to make that first move in towards Neon. Erpa getting killed as well. They're a little bit out of position with the rest of the team. Eklund now going to be a casualty as the Ubers are popped out now. It's a better Uber from Blue, but they lost tons of players before they could respond. And uh, they are going to be a retreating out of second here now once again. A loss. And KYY just going to be the lone defenders of this point as they bomb in towards Horpy. Do you find that frag? No heals for the blue team currently. Both soldiers find those frags, but they are taking tons of damage on this high ground. Neil getting low now. Doesn't matter if you kill DQZ. Your entire team is dead. But Lanza and Miss now are just going to be eating bullets from this heavy of Urpa, who's going to mow them down and just uh, tons of cleanup from him there. Kuna going to be the lone survivor on second. Is going to perish, and it's just going to be one respawner of Slash, who's not going to be able to block this second point. That is just like the much worse example of what could happen last time they did it, right? They just went in knowing, oh yeah, we probably have enough players for this. It just did not work out. They were 
way ahead of themselves there with the attempt to just get in dry and costed them pretty much the entire attempt here with that even though they did get the medic that is all they really accomplished here in the end so even trading in terms of the medics here in the end DQZ also dying pretty quickly afterwards even uber for that matter though means they at least can set up camp on yard for now as the second point has fallen to the side of the Finns. but yard they do want to use to that advantage slash already forward with the rest of the team rotating dunge box now trying to keep up the pressure at all times yeah, it's a good little play here. Just keeping up that pressure, seeing about uh, how the cracks will form in their defense and see if you can actually catch anything now. As they are getting some good spam off. Like, often I'm seeing Horpy at not full HP. And as, as, as I say that, they are just pressuring players through. And Horpy actually forces there on because Eklund was getting super low there because of the pressure from the soldiers. And it uh, looks like we are going to have the ready to get popped out as well as DQZ uses it to save Mist's life. Sticky Bombs, though, do manage to take down Edgar Colling there, and they are going to be trying to cap up the second now, but Ekelen there with the defense to pressure out these uh, these red players, but DQZ getting taken down now by Lost, as he did come in there with the flank. It's just going to be Kuna escaping back into mid. Lanza opting to hide, runs it through the shutter door, and it was a nice attempt on towards Torpy, but couldn't quite find it. Really unfortunate there, not to get much more out of that, but you have to deal with it now. Slash trying to be fancy, and <laughs> unlike... Neon, he doesn't spend all his time finding out the spots to stand on, so he will not find the spot he needs. We'll go down there. Kuna maybe had a trap somewhere. I can't see it anywhere, so probably just didn't get one up in time there to make something happen with a yes yeah, one for a second at least. That is all I really can say for themselves. So expect, uh, expect, uh, the, except the Lance oh. Sniper. Ooh, the trap. It's big. Sweet demo man, too. They want to play off this as well. Slash immediately in with the damage. Tries to get more. We'll get the force. That is what we call a premium pussy pop. Orpy took no damage. <laughs> but yeah, but did say maybe team was saved, weak. Yeah, maybe saved Eklund's life there and Erpa's. Mm, but we are seeing a nice little collapse here, actually. As they find DQZ as well. Mist getting taken down there. It's going to be a flank now coming in from Ekka. And they do actually manage to get a ton of frags on the red side as they take everyone down. Just going to be KYY now. Running in through Garage is going to be facing a 1v2 situation, but he does some good damage now heading into the second. Does get rocketed down, unfortunately, there by Slash. And uh, it's going to be a bit of an L taken there from the red, uh, from from the blue side, sorry. That is like the sort of like mid situation where you just go in for the medic at all costs and everyone else is just kind of dying as a result of it, right? They forced, they got forced and immediately went for DQZ. They got it, but that means like three people are shooting the medic while the rest of the red team can just comfortably shoot the, your team trying to kill the medic easily without much of any resistance here. As at least they're not going to do a bit for it. Not everyone was up in the fight, slash. The one overextending in the most unfortunate situation will go down here. Finn's staying in the fight for now. They have 20% this ad, but trying to keep this player into second. Loss already going deep, trying to flank behind. Rest of them slowly coming in. High bomb by Neon into the combo as well. They're forcing them back here. Yeah, this is a really, really good coordinated play coming out from the Finns as they manage to pressure them all the way back and take Yard there. And uh, tons of weak players on the blue side, but they are going to be able to arrow up now, get healed as DQZ finds his Uber. Whether he knows he has Uber advantage or not is another question. 30% advantage there, and uh, doesn't look like they're going to do anything with it. And uh, they are now buffing up their soldiers just for a defensive hold. Um, and they're just going to be chilling out here, it would appear, dumb once again. Yeah, Neon kind of in the back lines. Goes actually early in for the attempt. Will, however, not get much more out of it than just a little scare for the side of Virtus. Bro, Kuna does go down. That's actually a bad one to lose. Eklund will take the opportunity immediately. There we go. Key with the follow up. They just want all the damage for the force here. Lost. Actually, getting behind there too as the exchange rings out on both sides. Irpa winning a fight with some help in the sidelines too. All areas just going pretty well. Eventually, they lose one, but that's affordable enough. That was just a really nice little exchange off of just a single demo pick. They just immediately went over point when they could. Yeah, the real question now, though, is do you go in with your two-man ad? And the answer is no, and they're just going to start sticking up and seeing if they can get this second defense going or last defense also uh, from the red side. It's going to be interesting to see what they decide they're going to go with. They're opting for the Lanza Sniper once again. They have got uh, a spy just checking to see if they have any off-classes, and they would have spotted the Neon is up on the spy class. The Finns notorious for their spy gameplay. So let's see if they can do anything here with that spy as he's making his way into the upper area to try and find a way in towards last dump to get those backstabs. Well, one and side... <laughs> never mind. One side here, Notorious likes playing Spy. The other one, Notorious, he likes playing Sniper. That is Lancer. And with Echo going Tina, going down too as well here. Slash just busting through the shutter door there to make that happen. This is looking very ugly for the Finns already. They will get their Medic on alive at least. Hoppy is all the way back in mid already. 
He's also not so lucky on far side. Yeah, it's going weak, but at least not down. They secured the Uber to stay on mid with, but that's all I really have going for themselves right now after losing the second point so easily for Granary standards. We are straight back to another stalemate, though. Uh, this resident sleeper boys in the chat uh, for this one. Uh, but they have got Lanza Sniper now, so let's see if he can find anything. But we did talk about this before. It's just an awful sniping position to have. I mean, all you're gonna all you're gonna see is boxes. Like everything is high ground and uh, super low ground. But finding anything on the low ground at this point is gonna be a difficult situation. But Lanza now trying to snipe through Garage doesn't quite land any shots there. Tries to go in towards Eklund, doesn't find anything. Pressure now on towards Eklund. He gets super low but isn't going to go down there. And it's just going to just be this toing and throwing to see who can get the first pick. Yeah, it's going to be this really slow prodding on both sides right now. One side just trying to get the sniper in through the spam damage, the fin show they have against these sort of sniper threats. And the other side, obviously, just trying to get the sniper in there for the one quick attempt that maybe is just Whoa. good enough. There we go. I think that was a headshot into a pipe. I don't know why he didn't get the assist for that, because that was clearly a hit on Lancer's end. But it is what it is. He's trying to get more with it. Not quite happening. Actually, stops out the scatter gun nicely there um, to live. So Lancer stays alive. Here's the sack off of it from oh. the other side. door calling in deep. Oh. Horpy doesn't use their nice little play from him to survive uh, as, as long as he did. And just not using his Uber. He could have dropped there. One reloaded rocket would have ended his life. Did rely on his scouts quite heavily there as Kuna gets taken down. But DQZ actually finding two kills here. Uh, but tons of players down on the red side. It is going to mean that the blue team are now coming in. Mist now gets the Uber used on him. Orpi now refusing to use. Does finally pop out this Uber. It's so much better, but they drop Ekeland once again. They're just dropping him so much. It appears in these Ubers, unfortunately. But they're now running in towards second. But no demo man on second is a bit of a disadvantage for your team as they are now pushing super hard tons of damage through the shutter door neon isn't going to be able to find anything here just bombing back towards his medic to see if he can link up with him they are going to now be chased in towards this mid area as they are starting to bust them towards garage huge bomb from the red soldier they're just locking out so much space for his team and they are going to be able to take this mid now neon actually finds dqz in the back and that is going to mean that uh, Holpi now has uber advantage, but they are going to lose this mid. But Eklund now in through the choke first, does manage to survive there. Bomb on towards Holpi as Kuna finds that frag immediately. Lanza now taking a 1v3 and is going to die. That's going to be a wipe coming out from Virtus Pro. Here's the wipe, but a wipe with purpose. They will get the medical they were looking for at the end. DQZ dying to Neon's bomb there just barely, but he did. Uh, and they knew what they had to do. There's only one thing you can really do that will save you from much worse repercussions than they're in right now. And that is just all going in for the mad kill quickly. And the fact of the matter was that the Finns also tried to push into mid immediately, which not the worst idea, but they were just not quite ready positioning wise with the players they had to deal with any sort of sacks, especially not three people at the same time. So great call out for Virtus Pro gets them into a much more manageable situation on paper. In practice, there's a crit. On the other side here, on the fins with Hoppy picking, picking that one up from spawn. Obviously, they will have that now in uh, in theory, but we will see how that will work out once that is actually getting used here. Ooh, soldier crits as they come around the corner on towards Kuna. They find that frag. They're firing off so many rockets, not finding too much. However, they only found that one frag on towards Kuna. But we've got Lanza on the Putis on that high ground there. They didn't find anything and they've just sacked their whole team in for it. It was a nice commit though and a good attempt, but they didn't quite find the frags they needed. Erpa now just going to have to retreat now towards Horpy on the mid. Loss is going to uh, link up with the rest of his team as well, but there's so much space now for the red team to get forwards. So Lanza did have to go back and swap off, but they are starting to get tons of cap time down uh, for this side. DQZ has Uber. Neon is up on Spy again with the uh, French espionage immediately. Didn't work out too well last time. Maybe he can redeem himself a little bit more this time round. Gets pretty much behind for free because he only had to walk half the distance and the rest was just done by DQZ himself, basically. Already on the attempt, he's so close oh. yet so far. He's running away and using the Uber <laughs> ahead of time. Really unfortunate there for him, but what now? They have to live to see one. Horpy is just getting jumped at by everybody, completely left alone by the rest of his team. Oh my god, you hate to see it. Neon starts walking in for the backstab. The Uber gets used and he just looks at them like, well... <laughs> I'm useless. Anyway, red team in towards last. They are going to be sticking up this point now. KYY, the only one left alive. Did find a frag there, but isn't going to be able to block this point whatsoever. And that's going to be 3-1 to Virtus Pro. Yeah, it is not quite game yet in theory. 
But we all know how these stories go on Gardner here. This is so hard to play fast on if you're forced to. Because on the other side, Virtus Brono has a very easy task at hand. If this mid fight goes bad, they just know how to turtle this map, you would assume. We've seen them hold stuff so far, so what's stopping them from just doing it for a few more minutes here? Indeed. Eklund now decides he's going to roll out Garage. Kuna opting for that high ground once again. And we are seeing the red bomb come out immediately in towards Horpy. Does redirect in towards Eklund. Tons of damage down as we are seeing another soldier come through. Huge rocket on towards Horpy. And Eklund taken down. DQZ not even being pressured right now. Lost is too low to make a jump happen. Urpa just going to be trying to clean up that red soldier. It does drop down towards that health pack. It's going to be KYY running in now. Doesn't find anything. Urpa's just going to YOLO his way in towards mid now. Trying to find this medic. And that is going to be a full wipe coming out from the side of the Finns. I was talking about not losing, but no, they're just here to win still. <laughs> Can't forget about that one. And they're on that for now. Well, Kuna maybe a bit more than the rest of this team, but <laughs> it's getting punished at least. He's just in there as the one-man army into Shadow all alone. Will get taken down. Finns still have a fighting chance left in them, but needs to go well from here on out, and they just don't have anywhere to respond with. However, Mist also just kind of going by himself. Very reckless gameplay coming out of Virtus Pro, and it's not working quite as well as they were hoping for. DQZ just... <laughs> DQZ was running with his saw out for some reason across second and just decided he'd take a ton of damage rather than being ubered and uh, did feed away his life for it. And it's going to be the entire red side just dying here, it would appear, as they did lose absolutely everyone. Horpy now coming up with that uber. A bit of a throw there coming out from the uh, coming out from the side of Virtus Bro. But Urpa does get taken down there from a sticky trap from Kuna. Horpy's going to be in mid with his uber advantage, but Mist now is going to be lurking towards second. Does get spotted out there by Lost and Eklund and Neon, but Mist now, he's, he's like a wasp. Or a honey badger that just goes down fighting Kuna now, also in towards mid, and finds that force on towards Horpy uh, with the sticky pressure. All right, a minute 50 left on the clock here. Long lasting fights like this, obviously, not anything the Finns can really afford to have right now, even if they eventually go on, on top, especially if you can list them. So it's just such a, such a slow process for them to get through here right now. and. There are still people fighting second. They want to la make this last as long as possible before they even get to last in the first place. He trying his hardest to get in there quickly, but he's just kind of outnumbered as well. Slash with the splash off the pipe will get the kill as well. Three down at Fins. There's just nothing they can do right now. Indeed, they are going to be just posting up on last in the side of Virtus Bro, and the Finns aren't going to be doing too much here. As Urpa is all the way in, actually, in towards this last area. Does land a headshot there somehow uh, as he gets launched in. Ec oh, oh, there. They get towards the point and get collapsed on by the Red Uber there. Just trying hopelessly to make something happen. One minute on the clock done. It's already into garbage time, and it's going to be a fat win uh, for the side of Virtus Bro. Unfortunate for the Finns. Yeah, now the only thing that Virtus Pro really have left to do here, just for the purposes of like, you know, making their chances the best they can be going into the rest of the week where everything else is out of their control regarding other matches, is just getting three more points. There's not a very high likelihood to get first here. After all, all Bornicle needs to do is getting one point out of their match this week against Gallup and Terry um, to get the same amount of points as Virtus Pro. But why not at least take the chance, right? Three more points and <laughs> there's the tiniest chance of you just getting first. Yeah, I mean, I think that game was, it was a nice backwards and forwards, but there were a few mistakes uh, that were made from the side of the Finns there that caused them to lose. It wasn't, it was also, uh, I guess it was a combination of Virtus Bro there with a few nice plays as well. They did a great job of sort of kiting the aggression from the Finns all game long and uh, had their own strats in mind for sacks and getting through and lands on his sniper and stuff. Did make a difference in this game, I think, Dom. What about you? Uh, I don't know. That was... It wasn't like a hugely better performance by Virtus Bro than the Finns, right? It wasn't like a complete role by any means. But... No. Like you said, things here and there were just like that much more consistent for them uh, in these sort of fights on mids as well, right? Um, they were just always lo a little bit more daring, but they always also knew when they could be, and that is going a long, long distance over the course of a 30 minute game to just time your aggression that bit better at pretty much any point. And it, it just made a difference here, especially 
if you consider the fact that also a lot of it was just sort of spent on the back foot for the pins as well they constantly had to claw their way out of like bad situations and virtus pro always knew how to at least keep them in them even if they couldn't capitalize off of them immediately they at least made themselves get be able to get more chances out of it yeah, they were really good at collapsing their entire team whenever they lost DQZ into a and usually found him directly afterwards uh, whenever they needed to do that. Uh, but uh, I'm staring at some numbers, Dom. I don't know if you've got the logs on your screen. Uh, well, I can change that very fast. All I can see else. is Kuna did 10k damage and Lost got 12 air shots. Even though it's Granary, it still counts, boys. It's fine. Uh, that is Soldier main propaganda. I don't believe in that. <laughs> All right, yeah, so looking at these logs, all I'm seeing as well is Horpy got 13 deaths, DQZ got 10 deaths, slightly less deaths, mean many have more opportunities for more heals, more Ubers, and they were just able to push through and get these clean uh, clean trades through, and uh, tons of damage being dealt by Kuna there in second uh, most of the time, uh, being able to pressure really heavily on towards the Finns. Is that, that's basically what you can take away from these logs. But Eklund there on the other side doing a good job himself, but he just got dropped from one too many Ubers. There are a few mistakes here and there uh, that ended up uh, with a few couple demises, but we are now in towards our next map of Snake Water Dumb. And uh, how are you feeling about this? It's like the next slowest map, I want to say, we have on a rotation these days, right? <laughs> Snake Water. Um, and if... <laughs> If history has taught me anything, is that you just don't get out of last unless the other team completely dies. So it's going to be tough for whoever just gets the better start here, as always. I mean, it pretty much can be said for any map, but much like Grand Snake is one of those maps where it particularly just is awful to make a comeback on because these holes just are really dreadful to break. However, much to Lance's delight, it's a lot more manageable to snipe on this map. We saw him try as hard as he could to make it work on the last map and it had reasonable success not necessarily because he had like the huge shots but because the rest of the team played well off of any damage he did uh on this map he has like a lot more freedom in comparison on mid to second and as well as on last so we'll see how much they can take that to advantage for themselves we are now going live ladies and gentlemen welcome to map two of our season 35 game of division one week seven between lands of our circlet uh, versus Virtus Bro, and we're going to see who's going to come out on top here. Unfortunate now uh, for uh, the Finns, they're going to need to get some points on the board after this one to have any chance of making playoffs in this season. So good luck, have fun in the chat to both teams. We are now seeing an early bomb from Lost in towards the red side, on towards Slash. They're doing a ton of damage to him. We are now seeing also aggression from Neon, but Echolin just gets collapsed upon. Erpa gets in on top of this red soldier, does find that frag there. DQZ getting pressured now. It's a huge collapse from the blue side on towards the red team and Kuna is just going to be the lone survivor does pick up that health pack there it's going to be taking the one one with KYY but now gets absolutely munched by the rest of the blue team flying in there going to be a first mid win from the Finns a very hot start for the Finns here let's see if they can keep the ball rolling or how much this is going to determine for the rest of this game as we immediately head back onto last for Virtus Pro setting up the defense obviously Better off trying to hold this point for now, rather than just losing it straight away. So they're setting up the gun. Lance already on Sniper. This time a little bit aggressive for as long as he can anyway. Trying to maybe get an early kill. He trying to class that early and no one's with Lancer whatsoever. So he's an easy pick for the side of the finish. Scout there. Slash way too late to help out. They're just no... They're just no force to defend this with five people on last. The gun is at least up. That's the silver lining. But this Uber's here to crush any hope they have. Yeah, the Uber is just going to take out that sentry gun straight away, but they lose KYY on the point nice and early there. Does sacrifice his life away, but tons of point time from Erpa and KYY combined there to get that point capture. I think it all started going wrong as soon as Lanza decided, in the words of Eplee, to pick monkey class. I think it went wrong when the mid-fight started, and they just died, <laughs> to be fair, but... Hey, it's 28 more minutes left. They have plenty of time to have better mid-fights here. So let's see if they figure out what needs to happen. Yep, I mean, these Finnish mids, I've played against them before, and they are deadly on Snake Water. So let's see if they can make another one happen here with the aggressive Soldier Bombs. They're just sitting lost back now, actually, in towards Saw, just seeing if you can catch anyone that tries to bomb through with this counter-aggression, as we do see that Red Soldier bomb through directly onto the combo there. Well, Hopi with a nice little juke here, as we are seeing the counter-aggression come out from these Blue Soldiers, forcing them back here. And they have got Eklund actually blowing up to the high ground, gets insta piped by Kuna. Lost with a nice rocket, I'm missed there to deny his aggression in towards the rest of the blue side but we are seeing a split now as Erpa and Horby are going to be escaping now DQZ does find the frag on towards Lost as he made that aggression happen but it is going to be a overall mid win from Virtus Pro. That 
bit of work there by Kuno was actually huge because their beginning of that mid was actually really, really great in terms of defensive play by the Finns. But now they have to deal with the consequence of just barely losing early pressure. Kuno wants a lot out of this aggression here, but Oliver extends forward yet again. Both scouts trying to chase on the rest of the combo. Taking oh. the fight, they maybe just can't win though. Slash and missed with just a better damage around the corner. And which is will take this all the way or trying to at least Eklund having something to say about that. But only in exchange for now, but they're already so far committed back, it's gonna be impossible to come back in here, I think, for the pins. Yeah, they've gone all the way out there. Neon, in fact, decides he's gonna just escape here. We are now seeing Urpa and KOI just behind with them? the respawn. Yeah, he gets second. in behind. T deals a ton of damage there. Now, Horpy is out of position, gets picked off as well. It's gonna be two down for the uh, blue side, but they are gonna now just gonna be walking in for free. And they're just gonna be pressuring this point immediately as they bomb the soldier through in towards that point. Now, Urpa's going back to defend it. Isn't gonna be able to do anything against this 200 HP soldier in his face. And that is going to be a straight W coming out from Virtus Pro. And that's the price you have to pay when you're trying to fight second in a position where maybe you just really couldn't. The Finns tried though to the best of their abilities and it just should not be uh, so often with Snake. Second is this forbidden fruit that everyone wants to get before it's too late, but <laughs> <laughs> every single time it just is to no avail. Indeed, we are now onto our third mid fight of the game and it's even scores. Let's see if they can make anything happen here from each side. The Finns really need to be taking the aggression here and they are with Lost in lower and they're bombing Neon through in towards Kuna, but Kuna with a nice fight there to take him down. Mistress trying to fight against Erpa on the high ground. Erpa is going to win that one, but we are seeing the aggression from Slash on that high ground in towards Echelon. Tons of damage being dealt now. Horpy is going to be all alone, but it's going to get absolutely sandwiched by red players. Nice pipes coming out as well as an arrow from DQT to kill that frag onto Horpy. Kuna does die, but it's just going to be KYY left alive in the back line to see if he can stop any of this mid cap. Well, he got spotted early, so it's unlikely he's going to have to pull something insane out of the back. And while barely not getting the kill, even if it wouldn't have been good enough to really save this. So this will be the end of the mid fight for the Finns, which is really unfortunate because the beginning was looking fairly promising. But they were just so split apart in terms of where people were. A lot of people behind, two people on point, and that's just not enough to deal with the rest of what was left at the spur of the time. And it just easily takes care of the medic being completely stuck alone. Neon again back on his main, but as so often today, it just shouldn't be. They're from Sniper, a different story. At least one of these officers is putting the work right now. Still just a kill on Lancer. Scout helps, obviously, living on Lars, and the trap onto Kuna as well. Makes life a lot easier. Maybe now it's enough to be comfortable on Lars for a little bit longer here. Or maybe DQZ and team will just still take their chances. I I heavily doubt it. You're going in without your without your pocket scout, without your demo man. You're, you're going into essentially a slaughterhouse as they bomb in Slash as well just to see if they can find anything there. And uh, they don't. And uh, it's going to now be Horpy coming up with his uber charge. And it looks like Blue Team actually want to get aggressive with this one as they start taking lobby. And they are now sending Echelon deep. And they do actually lose him, though, as he gets over-aggressive. Just gets absolutely annihilated in that doorway there. So no demo man from the blue side. It is going to open up a world of opportunities for the side of Virtus Bro. But lands it up on that sniper class is going to mean that they're going to have to play this one a little bit slower. Sniper immediately gets something here. I was talking about Lancer probably picking up Sniper yet again. Seems to like this class for this sort of situation a lot, and his team certainly plays around it, but they're not playing around here, just hiding in the corner. Gets one, maybe two, will probably oh. die, but no, he lands on the, on the face <laughs> of the soldier. Doesn't take fall damage, well, he clearly should have otherwise. That is, I, you could say insanely played around, or just really lucky, whatever choice you make here, it is just really good for them, as they will have a little bit more of a chance to get to second. Mist barely living here. Eklund really wants this kill, this could be a big mistake. Mist with the heals now, and the fall oh. coming out. Mist is an absolute unit. He's chewing on these fins right now with the pistol out as well. He's on a 4k currently as far as I can count. I've just been watching him this whole time. He's absolutely slaying, heading in towards last. It's just going to be holding the W key in towards Neon. And he's going to also find that frag as well. Mist on a 4k there to win out the round for Versus Bro. A lot more credit I think should go to DQZ as well. As much as Mist might have been munching on the fins, he's also been munching on those heals when he needed to. Arrow came out in time as much as the yep, yep, force yep. as well. And they made the most of getting faster. They knew people were in uh, within striking distance of this Uber, just basically winning them the round here. So this all works out just fine for Virtus Pro. Well played around between Miss and his medic. The Finns may be losing this game right now, but Eklund is on the Chad cannon of the loose cannon. So I'm interested to see if he can make it work. Uh, we are seeing now bombs coming from both Red Soldiers in towards Horpy and Eklund. Not going to find too much damage as Horpy takes... Uh, a pickaxe damage there, nothing else. And Echelon does in fact find a frag there on towards Mist. It's going to be a total wipe from Virtus Bro. 
Yeah, you face the aggressive mids before and they are still coming out strong here, so Finn's not quite out of it. Lanta have circulated once to still have a fighting chance oh. in this game. Actually, also far forward. No, that they're, they're, they're second guessing themselves is usually as bad, but in this case, it is the best thing that they could have done. Actually, won't get anything for his troubles. At least he lives and doesn't like, stay there for too long on last for this Uber to still have much of any effect into this last push right now. Coming in through Charlotte, it seems. Yeah, they just pop it out straight away. No stickies. Uh, everything gets cleared there. The sentry gun now up to level 2, getting healed up there, but does go down eventually. We've got both soldiers now pressuring this flank, and Lost is too low to come in now, and uh, it's going to just be Neon and Lost. Unable to do anything here in this uh, last, as they are both too low. Upper taking a file on the spawn with Lanza. Not exactly what you want when Mist is up on the heavy class, blocking that point. And it is going to be a collapse now coming out from the side of the red team on with Slash there taking so much room and Kuna also finding a frag there. But we are now seeing the pickaxe kill on towards Horpy as well and Echo getting taken down. And it is going to be a bit of a W coming out from Virtus Bro now as they are able to push out of last. That was so weird. They obviously had just a completely botched English push into last where just really nothing happened of value. Uh, but it, they just like stayed about on, on lobby for way too long, so they will get cleaned up here eventually. Dustin saw also cleaned up here. Really, really bizarre decision to stay here. Upper, speaking of staying, will stay in forward spawn on Sniper. Will take his chance here on the monkey class, I guess. <laughs> and it will not work out quite yet. Yeah, it's going to actually remain on Sniper now. He's going to be moving up towards Bats. Maybe they think he's changed back onto Scout and uh, they'll be able to surprise <laughs> Look, him. Actually, they on. are now just running in now, but they're going in through Cheese. A very oh, smart maneuver from Virtus Bro. And they are just getting in on top of Erpa. They do manage to take him down now. Kuna getting a flash now through this doorway. No stickies as they did get debt there. Some cap time coming on towards second as well. It looks like they are going to be able to get this uh, second cap, but now Slash is in deep, making tons of space with the side of Virtus Bro. Enough to take out KYY at least. Was getting low on the low ground as well and does eventually get taken down. Nice bomb through though from Slash to clean up all of these players. It's just going to be Urpa left alive. Is going to not be able to defend this one. And Virtus Bro is going to pick up another round. I know a lot of things happened there, but I don't know if it was in stream. Neon is just playing like Team Fortress 7, I swear. He was like wall bugging <laughs> the, the tree on second, which hides him almost entirely due to being clipped behind the tree visibly. This man is on another level with what he's doing. It wasn't enough though, a scout on second still won the 1v1, so I mean, you can be invisible, but you still need to win the DM fights in the end. It looks like they are heading into this next mid now. A little bit passive now coming out from the blue side, more passive than we've seen in the past, but Neon finding a frag early on, and it is going to be now. He is now bombing up through, but it's a total wasted bomb. Kuna with the air pipe and missed uh, there with the scout to finish him up. KOI with the buy in chat, and it's going to be lost in Eklund as well as Holpi escaping back in towards second. Yeah, looks like maybe, but just maybe, Virtus Bro is catching on to the aggressive miss and ways to deal with them better, calling with the damage, finds Holpi, everyone a bit late on the reaction, will work out for him just fine here, a little bit of counter reaction out of uh, the Finns now as well, trying to get something done of the meta they just had to deal with, but it's just too little too late, he is just trying to wreck havoc behind as the soldiers that clearly didn't work. Might at least get a kill out of that one, even if traded out for Lancer immediately. They pop through here, really uh, questionable how all of this went down, dropping the moment for that. This is an awful uber. Uh, but they are still getting tons of space here, they're running Mist and Lancer in to see if they can fight this 2v4 fight up against the sentry gun. They do take down the gun, but they are now getting support from the soldiers, and all they've got to work with is more HP than the blue side, so let's see if they can get anything here. Nice air pipe coming out there early on, but doesn't actually find anything there. The sticky's now getting debt on the point, so there is going to be their point open for capture. Mist is going to be just rampaging through this blue side, as they do find Echeland as well. Horpy's out with the swords, no one's going to be able to find it. It's going to be another round from Virtus Bro. Really well played. They just played around point nicely. Uh, that's like the tough, the tough part I think about Snakewater often is just like finding the right moment to play the point. They just beautifully delayed it for as long as necessary to bait people towards it and then just strike it when it was just right for people to make the desperate move for it, right? And it works out just fine this time around. 4-1 lead very quickly into this game. Only 18 more minutes, but only two more rounds maybe if Virtus Pro keeps this up. Yeah, it's a great gameplay coming out here from Virtus Pro. Let's see if they can keep this one up as Lost goes in for a nice early bomb in towards the red side. Tons of damage on that red roof area. And it's going to be running forwards now with Erpa. And it's also going to be Slash super low in Kitchen versus KYY. And he's going to be able to take him out there with the rest of the aggression coming out. Missed now. He's going to be collapsing with the rest of his team in towards Erpa there as they do take him down. Uh, a die in full capital letters from Slash as Neon. Currently in behind DQZ. Finds one rocket. 
finds doesn't find the second one and just totally whiffs there and uh, DQZ didn't even turn around. <laughs> well, they still have to be, be scared though. Aklon on one side and Neon on the other. They can't really quite cover both with the medic watching one of them. Never mind. DQZ is now he lifts that and Here it will all be fine in the end. Kuna finds the kill onto Ekelund as well. Ekelund bombs in and Kuna's just like strong, strong arming the Finns out of existence. Taking a 1v1 with losses. He wins that one as well! Kuna is an absolute unit. This man just doesn't die. He refuses to lose. That is a very powerful weapon. Just not wanting to lose. And <laughs> but they were, they, they were very good at that one. I, I will admit that. So let's see how much they can carry on this night. Comfortable. What is it, 70% advantage from mid now on? Currently on to Sang, yep. not much resistance just yet, everyone's just falling back, rightfully so as well. Epa, not so lucky though, he wants to really smash something oh, down. No. Slash, Lancer missed, all getting something out of this one. Lancer dying, maybe, but how much does this matter right now with this momentum into last? Dual monkey class did not work out well with the spy and sniper there. Lost just going to be defending this one on his own. Eklund now with stickies on point. The red uber gets popped out. KOI dies in the shutter. And they are just going to put mist on the point. Sits in the corner. Takes no damage. And they are going to cap this one. That's going to be 5-1 done. Looking very convincing now from Virtus Pro. Yeah, they, they had like a, a rough start after losing first round immediately in the mid-fight. Still looking fairly strong for the Finns for a little while here. But no, this has completely turned around in every other facet since then. And it's been just the Virtus Bro Show and an extension of that also just Kuna making a name for himself to everybody that might not be aware just yet. Yeah, this man is an absolute unit and just goes into every fight and just wins out on DM. It's going to be lost with a fast bomb. Holy God, that was so quick. It doesn't find anything with it, though. Uh, unfortunately, there's Kuna lands a nice pipe onto pretty early on, and they are now going to be pressing super far forwards. Horpy getting taken down there, and it's just going to be... Okay, KYY on the force of nature uh, to clean up uh, Eka Culling there. And it's going to be Eklund now retreating back in towards the last. It's going to get chased heavily here. Mist finally cleans him up. It's going to be a wipe uh, for the side of the Finns. Unfortunate from them. Looking very dire now on match point in towards last. Yeah, they did forget about an important detail though. While everybody wanted the kills, they kind of forgot. Oh yeah, we kind of need to like, cap the point to actually win here in the end. As much as kidding is maybe the more fun thing to do. Now somebody has to do the dirty work. So this will all delay a little bit actually to the point where Kuna is just kind of abandoned here in a 2v1. Epa Neon cleaning up together. Neon on scout right now actually and sneaks into the back lines too here. So Finns are starting to have fun in the face of certain defeat. But <laughs> there's just so long they can really check this out I would imagine. Yeah, we've got one Force of Nature scout versus the world that would appear as KOI is on second, but Neon getting absolutely blasted by Mist there. They are going to be Ubering through lower in towards loss. Just going to be Erpa and Ekelund on this last point here to defend. A direct hit. Oh, the direct hit does take it up. Nice pipe from Ekelund to clean up that air shot as well. Sora's out from Horpy in towards Lanza, and they do actually find that Uber there. Slash is now up on the spy class as well. One monkey class for him. Horpy with the sword! Oh my god! He managed to take down Kuna as well. Horpy's having a 1v1 with DQZ in Lower. It's the medic 1v1 of the century, ladies and gentlemen, as they are now fighting in Africa. They're dueling out, firing arrows, they're missing all of them. They are now finding them, but Horpy now in towards DQZ, and they ruin it. They ruin it, Dom. Okay, of course they do. Uh, on a completely different dawn, I think my Twitch chat is broken, so it says everything twice, which is actually kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> but beyond that, yeah, this is like, how much hope is there really after the pin right? They're just trying to go out and as much of a high note as they can right now, because... There's just no getting around the fact that they've just been out class on this map right now and Virtus Pro can just take this home basically whenever they feel like it right now. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just having random DM across the map and I'm in I'm enjoying watching the chaos, but Slash now in behind. Oh lost with the air shot to take him down. Holy moly, that was a nice little shot there. Alright. It's Hobby against Kudo. Somehow this is able to transpire. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow both of them lose. Well, Kudo has done enough today already, so I guess he needs to lose some of them, kind of. Oh no, KOI trying to get aggressive in towards Mist and just eats the dirt there. It just gets <laughs> scattergunned into the floor. On a tiny amount of HP, 5 HP to his name. It does pick up the small bottle though. Just gonna be Mist and DQZ building up their Uber here. As they have got... Okay, the butter knife coming out from Slash as they take him down. It's gonna be Mist now, chilling out in towards Lash. Gonna just be running in towards this point now. But Ekelon now doesn't want to give, doesn't want to give it up too soon. Horpy now out with the swords again, but not enough heals coming out. But Horpy gets one sword. 
he does find the frag. It's going to be Horpy versus the world now defending this point. As they are going to be able to maybe defend this one. Lost in. But Monkey Class denies that point with the revolver. The button knife is out. It's going to be a round from Virtus Bro to finish this one out. It's going to be 6 1 to Virtus Bro. And they are going to be taking both maps here, though. Yeah, very, very strong performance for Virtus Bro on Snakewater. And a scary prospect of whoever might face them in the second round of playoffs. Whenever that is determined, I think this matchup will come down to the winner of um joseph zone against the compound i believe for third and fourth right i yeah yeah they, they have to play against for, for sure they're on like tied on the same points i guess only the order of these two teams can change but i don't think that it makes a difference for third and fourth too much as far as i remember i don't know if third gets like a mapping advantage or something like that um but yeah that, that is gonna be like your first round of playoffs like guaranteed at this point with this match going out the way it did and the winner of them will face Virtus Pro for semifinals. Yep. Uh, so Virtus Pro heavily securing their place in the uh, in the playoffs, and uh, unfortunately for the Finns, probably not going to be able to make it at this point uh, into playoffs. So commiserations for them in this game. Uh, but I I think that just showed Vert how strong Virtus Pro really was. And their ability to sort of coordinate aggression, show off their individual talent as well. You know, Kuna hit a bunch of air shots and missed just powerhousing through people and just showing how their team likes to play. They like to be aggressive. They like to control the enemy team as well um, by just funneling them into chokes and just destroying them when they get the chance. Taking these uber trades as well. Um, a lot of teams are afraid to make uber trades, but these guys seem relatively confident in doing it and uh, winning out on a lot of these trades as well. But we have got logs now, though. Yeah, and if anything, just having a strong performance to go out on is a, a very promising note going to playoffs as well, because they did lose points to all of the playoffs teams. They lost the map of product against the Joseph Zone. They lost a point in uh, what was like the slowest game of all time against the Compound on Sunshine, and they obviously dropped five in a really close Gully Wash game, I believe, and it was included there against Bornicle. So it's still close up top there, but that is just a strong statement to go out on for the regular season. Indeed, I'm actually staring at the mist, nearly 400 DPM, 30 frags on the board from him. Uh, so really just W key with these Ubers, and he was doing a great job throughout this entire game, I think. Um, and Kuna there, dealing a lot of damage as well, not finding as many frags, but definitely doing the damage slash as well. Um, just all I'm seeing is red names to the top of the uh, top of the damage board. Um, but the real bright winner, lost with seven air shots. Round of applause. And it's not granary, so I actually believe you. Yep. All right. So, uh, any anything else from from you, really, Dom? Before we uh, close this one out? Uh, not really. This was just such a commanding performance, right? I mean, uh, Virtus Pro made a, sh a show for it and showed us how strong they can be. And what is up with their performance right now? Obviously, some tricky ones here and there. But when they're on it, then they're on something here. I think tonight they had like really good scrim results as well going into this match. So. People were thinking Bonicle has us in the back, but no, this is still all to be decided in the next few days, slash weeks, whatever. Indeed, let's uh, let's do a couple uh, a couple shout outs. Uh, Arch rhythm, any shout outs from you? Okay, Arch rhythm says shout out to the original Xbox 360 controller. Dumb, any shout outs from you? Uh, shout outs to the opposite of that because the D pad sucks on that thing, and <laughs> also shout outs to Frank Gaming and TF2 Pickup Pierre. Okay, um, from from myself, shout outs uh, to Arch Rhythm for producing this game. Thank you very much. Shout outs to you, Dum Tum, for being a co caster in chief. Uh, shout outs to you, the viewers. Shout out to Rox's Hedgehog as well. That thing is adorable. And shout outs to Copenhagen Games coming up soon, ladies and gentlemen. If coronavirus doesn't quell its fury, um, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, so it's going to be happening in April. So be there or be square, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we hope to see you there. It should be a great time. Tons of teams still fundraising uh, to see if they can make their land dreams come alive. So uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this uh, watching this broadcast from Chris Cast, and uh, we'll see you all there. Peace.